experiment four. Experiment four is uh, titled the gravimetric analysis of barium chloride hydrate. When we say hydrate, it means that you have an ionic compound that includes water in its uh, formula. And uh, where exactly water is in the ionic compound, it would be surrounding the cation of the ionic compound. And when we say water surrounding the cation, it means that it's uh, carrying on intermolecular interactions. And the type of intermolecular interactions is dipole ion interaction. The ion would be the cation, which is here be A2+. Plus. And because water is a polar molecule, so it will, have, uh, it will carry on this interaction from its dipole. Now, barium is positively charged and therefore water will face barium from its oxygen side. Oxygen has the partial negative charge. Today we have barium chloride hydrate. Now, in the formula here you can see it's written BaCl2XH2O. So our objective in this experiment is to determine X. Now to determine X, we will see it in details in the post-lab discussion. But quickly now, I can tell you that X represents the molar ratio between water and the anhydrous barium chloride, which is BaCl. So therefore now the objective is to determine the number of mole of water and number of mole of the anhydrous BaCl2. So we need to find masses of water and of anhydrous barium chloride. Okay, that's what we are going to do. Now, the experimental procedure, you have seen it before. inside the crucible and we will be heating it for a certain time to, to make sure that water has evaporated. Now before that, before we start the experiment, we need to make sure that we have certain data. One data point we need is the mass of crucible and lid because we will be subtracting it later on from the uh, mixture before heating and after heating. Okay. So once I have the mass of empty crystal and lead, I can weigh two grams of the hydrate, around two grams. Okay. I make sure that I have the exact mass of everything, and then I subtract later to get the exact mass. Okay. And I can also weigh it after heating. Now, a few technical details before we start is that the crucible is made out of porcelain. Porcelain is porous material where water or water vapor from air can get inside this material and therefore it will increase the mass of the empty crucible and lid. So that's why when we calculate the mass of empty crucible and lid, we need to make sure that the water inside the porcelain is gone. For that we need to heat it. And here we have what we call desiccator. Inside the desiccator we have dry rides. These dry rides, that probably you cannot see in here because it's brown, these dry rides they absorb moisture from air and therefore the air inside is dry. When I heat my crucible and lift I should not put them outside because if I put them outside like this, water will get into them again when they cool down. I'll let them cool down inside the desiccator. So you hold on to the lid tight and you just heat it from both sides. And just be careful with this procedure because the lid tends to slip from the tongue. So just 
Now when you see that the porcelain is getting yellowish, it means that it's hot enough to for the water to uh, get out of it now. You will not be able to evaporate all the water inside it, but most of the water will just be. Now, you lift the dissipator cover, you put your lid inside. The same thing you can do with the crucibles. You just heat it from inside and outside. And you wait for the crystal and lead to cool down. So now that the crystal and lead cooled down inside the desiccator, you just take them and you will just weigh them to get the mass of empty crystal and lead. Once you find out the mass of empty crystal and lead, so you just put them like this, okay? This will give you the mass of empty crystal and lead. You write it down in your lab manual. You will be weighing around two grams. So it doesn't matter if it's a little bit less or a little bit more. So you look at the mass of the crystal and lead. Add to it around two grams. So here if I have like 39.2, I'll make sure that to add until 41.2. And this is going to give me a mass which is close to 2 grams. Okay, so here I have 41.3, which means that I will have a mass close to 2.1 for the hydrate. The hydrate, when you touch it, you can feel that the, the solid particles are kind of sticking to each other because there is water in it. It's kind of wet, but it's not very wet. Okay? You will see the difference later on uh, between the, this solid and the solid that you will get after heating. Okay? It will be dry powder. Now, you can place your crucible here with a lid. So we'll be heating to make sure that all the water is gone. Now how much time we need for all the water to evaporate? We need around 20 minutes. Okay? So you will be waiting for 20 20 minutes, we turn off the burner, okay, and we will need to, for this crucible and lead and the mixture to cool down, that's why we will place them in the desiccator again, so they can cool down without water coming into the crucible lead and the mixture again. Now that we have waited enough time for the crucible and lead and the mixture to cool down, we'll just get the mass of crucible, lead, and the solid after heating. This will allow me to calculate the mass of the anhydrous. So I can clearly see here that the mass of the mixture has decreased because water evaporated. So now that I have the mass of crystal and lead empty, mass of crystal and lead and the solid before heating, and mass of crystal and lead and the solid after heating, I can calculate the mass of water, the mass of the anhydrous, figure out the number of mole, and find x. Okay guys, so now that you have finished your experiment, basically what you did, you heated the solid enough time for all the water to evaporate. Basically what you have, you have in here, the remaining solid in here is the anhydrous barium chloride and what happened to water 
water evaporated, right? So now, in this table, what you did, you have, so first you need to fill in the formula of the anhydrous salt. The formula we said is the barium chloride, okay? Formula mass of the anhydrous salt, so you just calculate the formula mass. Say it's going to be molar mass 1, you find out this number. Formula mass of water, we know it, it's around 18.016 gram per mole, don't forget the units, it's important. Mass of the crucible and lead, so it's different from one case to another, so it's going to be A. Mass of crucible lead and hydrate before heating, so again, this is the mixture before heating, it's B. Okay, to calculate the mass of the hydrate, it's B minus A. Now, mass of crucible cover and sample after heating, so this is, you should weigh it and find it, say for example, C. Mass of anhydrous salt, how do I calculate the mass of anhydrous salt? C minus A. Right? Now, remember that our reaction is barium chloride X H2O. I don't know how much X. Now, I will heat it. I will get barium chloride hydrate plus X for balancing water, which will evaporate gas. Now to find X, X is equal to the mole ratio between water and anhydrous barium chloride, so it's number of mole of water divided by the number of mole of the anhydrous barium chloride. Now, here I have mass of the anhydrous salt, so from here I can get the number of mole of anhydrous barium chloride. To get the mass of water, now mass of water is equal to what? is equal to mass of the hydrate minus the mass of the anhydrous. So it's going to be mass of the hydrate, which I calculate from B minus A, minus the mass of the anhydrous, which I calculate by C minus A. Now that you get the mass of water, you can get the number of mole of water. Having the number of mole of water, number of mole of barium chloride and hydrous, I can find X. And therefore I can find the formula of the barium chloride hydrate.